After the news that punk band NoFX would disband in 2023, frontman Fat Mike determined to preserve their musical heritage by opening a museum of the world's first punk rock music. According to Louder, some of the funders for this project came from underground scene elders such as Brett Gerwitz, Pat Smear, Mark Hoppus, Tim Armstrong, skate legend Tony Hawk, to Vans Warped Tour Festival founder Kevin Lyman. Unfortunately the only major American punk band to turn down the opportunity to be involved with the punk rock museum was Green Day. There's a lot of punk rockers, I don't want corporations, just punk rockers and bands. It's funny, there's one band that refuses to take part, said Fat Mike on the Tuna on Toast podcast with host Stryker. When Stryker guessed Green Day, Fat Mike immediately confirmed the answer. Fat Mike himself had even contacted Green Day many times but the results were still negative. Fat Mike had insinuated that there was still a place for Billy Joe Armstrong CS at the Punk Rock Museum. We'll still give it as a display, said Fat Mike teasingly, but it will be very small, he added with a smile. Even so, the Punk Rock Museum will still open on January 13, 2023 in Las Vegas, America. The museum will display amazing artifacts such as brochures, photos, clothing, instruments, handwritten lyrics, artwork and almost anything else contributed by the people and bands that were there. Not only that, visitors can also play guitar and bass connected to amplifiers from punk scene leaders such as NoFX, Rise Against, Pennywise, Sick of It All, Strung Out and others. For nearly 40 years, NoFX has been the most unlikely success story of punk rock music. Since their formation in 1983, the band has never signed with a major label, never had a top 40 hit song and never had a breakthrough to the mainstream. They've had serious struggles with drug abuse and other poor life decisions, their sense of humor remains locked in an adolescent mode, and their music remains defiantly stripped down. Their lead singer is called Fat Mike, even though he's arguably never been very fat and they once thought releasing an 18-minute long song The Decline was a good idea. However, here are some interesting facts about NoFX. Fat Mike was addicted to OxyContin. As noted by the AV Club, NoFX's lead singer Fat Mike is a rare musician who increased his drug use and grew wilder as he got older. Most rockers go wild in their youth, then sober up in middle age when their bodies can't take it anymore, but Mike actually seemed to lean into his demons as he hit his 40s and 50s. The singer is sober today but not after getting ensnared in the same drug epidemic sweeping the rest of the country legal pharmaceuticals. As The Observer reports, Mike didn't start doing drugs until he was in his 30s, starting with Vicodin and Percocet and cocaine. He would use while touring with the band, but when he came home he would try to sober up so he could run his business interests. He discovered that he couldn't quite stop taking OxyContin, even though he was on a relatively low dose, he would feel sick if he stopped taking them. Then a doctor recommended he undergo a three-month program using Suboxone, a drug designed to help people kick their oxy habits. He quickly found himself just as addicted to Suboxone, he had to enter a rehab in order to kick the habit for good. NoFX has been banned in the USA. When you're a punk band known for being controversial and irreverent, it's easy to think you can get away with anything. NoFX have written songs celebrating drug abuse, they've mocked other bands for being sellouts, they've used offensive images for album covers and gotten away with it. But in the wake of the 2017 shooting at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas, they finally went too far. A few months after this horrifying crime which left 58 people dead and more than 500 injured, NoFX thought it would be a good idea to crack jokes about it on stage, including saying at least they were country fans and not punk rock fans. The backlash was fast and furious, NoFX found all of their upcoming concerts in the United States were cancelled, they also lost their sponsor Stone Brewing which dropped the band like a hot rock in the wake of the controversy, the band admits it made a terrible mistake. Eric Sandin's heroin habit was outed by Rolling Stones. 
It's no secret that the members of NoFX have always been very, very fond of their illegal substances. The band has been very open about their drug use, writing songs celebrating their experiences including the hilariously literal drugs are good and as Vice reports, more recently songs celebrating sobriety, as the AV Club notes, the band's history of drug abuse and addiction goes back decades. Drummer Eric Sandin's heroin addiction led to two contentious moments in his career. According to the band's memoir, when the band was gearing up to record their 1992 album White Trash, Two Heaves and a Bean he was confronted by lead singer Fat Mike and told he had to either enter rehab or quit the band, prompting Sandin to finally kick the habit. But as Exclaim reports, heroin had one more trick to play on Sandin. A freelance photographer working for Rolling Stone contacted him while he was still using the drug and offered to pay him $350 for a photo of him injecting heroin. Sandin says he specifically requested they not show his face, but when the photo published his face was clearly visible which is how his mother learned he was a drug addict. The name NoFX doesn't mean anything. Band names often have a bit of mystery to them, and fans often want the meaning behind a name to be literal. There have been plenty of theories over the years about NoFX some people think it's a statement about synthesizers and other artificial elements in music, an assurance that the band won't use any fancy effects. That's partially true, the bands has stated that there seem to be a lot of gimmicky bands around, we like to think that our name meant we were against that. But the truth is a lot simpler, they stole it. As the band notes in their book, the band name was inspired by the band Negative FX, a Boston-based band that was part of the straight-edge scene. Negative FX didn't last long they played a handful of shows and put out one album then broke up. Since Negative FX had broken up so quickly, No FX thought the riff on their band name would be a statement about their own longevity which worked out great, since the band has been going strong for nearly four decades.